Good morning, folks. Let's go right to ISON. Spaceweather.com has a couple good posts on the comet this morning, including this share from Michael Yeager, one of the best amateur astronomers in the world. The ion and dust slash debris tails have separated as the angle between the comet and the sun and the comet's trajectory have grown to allow for dual tail visibility. Of course, ISON's only one of four comets visible in the pre-sunrise sky. Another Tony Phillips post there. ISON continues to brighten strongly, and according to Bruce Gary's site, which is linked for you below every day, the comet will be visible to the naked eye in eight days. Quick storm review. Rain totals reached inches in Croatia, which wouldn't have been a problem if people's roofs were left on their homes after a 135 mile per hour wind. Word also coming in that a 10 hour freak storm caused a lot of damage in Greece. It was borderline tornado the entire time. Eastern Australia looking to the fires in the south deciding to go the opposite direction. West Coast, still taking a non-stop line up the leading east convergence of that Pacific low. And if it seems colder in the central and north central states, it is. And here's why. Last watches are for accumulation, flood and landslide potential where the rainfall has been tremendous. This will be a watch going forward. Looking at the muon counts on Bartol, approaching 102, the highest this observer has seen. The solar flares are not gone, but certainly more sporadic. But the sunspots do look promising. First, the departing big guy gave a good show, including the X-flare in CME two days ago, still on its way to Earth. And the delta remains, even though the active region is on its way out. Then, incoming on the south, we have a few significant portions, multiple Earth-sized umbras, and three or four spots of magnetic mixing. Last but not least, that's not a moon or a space station. It's a cresting sunspot that could fit multiple Earths inside of it. Solar wind showing calming conditions. Density is holding with falling speed. KP index reveals that lack of instability. And the more sensitive metrics are also regaining their nice curves, magnetics and electrons. The Earth-facing corona holes were taking their time, but as they saw their time was up with encroaching fields, they tagged a 6.6 .6 on the Kamchatka Peninsula of Russia. Last note, and it's an important one, the CME from that X-flare two days ago is expected to impact Earth between tonight and tomorrow. Many of you have concerns with the Grid X power drill, the power down simulation occurring the same day that the CME from the first X-flare to directly face Earth this year is due to arrive. What a coincidence. But make no mistake, if something happens, the government messed up. This CME is not enough. A CME to take out the grid needs to be super dense and fast, and to take out power tomorrow, it would need to fire today and be near X20 or more. Eyes open, no fear, it's 6.15am Eastern Time and that's the news. Be safe everyone.